Hi, and welcome to Spectrum. I'm Ruth. And I'm Brenton. We're excited to be with you this evening. Ruth, as we get going today, we have some wonderful guests. Who are we going to start we with? We do. We're going to start off with two guests from LifeQuest. We have John Jones, who's the president and CEO. He's introducing Chance Butts, and they're both with LifeQuest. They have good news coming up. They're our first interview. And then we're going to talk to a local YouTuber. Some of you may know Tamara Aragon. She's with the Quality Tam Show. Uh, you can be found on YouTube. We're going to talk to her. Stay with us. We are pleased today to have two wonderful gentlemen here with us from LifeQuest. One of them you know, because he's been with us on Spectrum before, John Jones, the president. But we also have the opportunity of introducing you today to uh, Chance Butts, who is uh, going to be talking to us as well. Gentlemen, thanks for being with us today. It's uh, good to have you both with us. It's great to be back again. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you for having us, sir. Oh, for sure. Well, John uh, and Chance, it's it's good to, to be able to have two of you, you know, not just one. <laughs> and we're going to talk a little bit about, I guess, a transition that's taking place yes, at LifeQuest. Uh, John, why don't you start us off, and then we're going to bounce over to Chance and find out a little bit more. You've been doing this for, what, over a decade now? Uh, 11 years. April 1st was 11 years for me. And on June 30th, I will be stepping down as president of LifeQuest, and Chance will be stepping into my position. And, of course, we talked a few weeks ago with you about some of the things that you're going to be uh, dealing with in, in some new capacities, but we really want to talk a lot about LifeQuest today. And uh, chances, as, as you are thinking about this, uh, you know, this is, is, a, is a new opportunity, but a, a new challenge for you. How have you gotten involved with LifeQuest in the past? Uh, thank you, sir. I uh, moved here in 2020, November 2020, um, in the Marine Corps and started volunteering with LifeQuest. And um, what an adventure that's been. We, <laughs> we were, uh, me and John were having lunch one day and um, I asked him a question about, you know, how much longer would he lead this ministry? And he, he, uh, told me what God had for me and, um, and here we are. Yes. You know, he, he asked me, uh, or he, he proposed that I could, or th that he had, he knew who, who his successor would be. And, um, I said, who? And he said, me. And I said, I don't think so. And, uh, I'm from Georgia. I didn't, ex this was not the, my plan, uh, yeah, here we are. But here we are. Thank and you. so you're in this uh, transitionary process. Uh, you probably still have a few weeks to go, and it's always good to have a transitionary uh, period. Now, uh, John, with you stepping down from LifeQuest, you are going to stay involved with ministry, but just kind of in a different format. Isn't that right? Correct. I'll, uh, I'll be leaving in October to go to the Philippines, where I'll be serving with a ministry called KCM, which has literally planted a church right in the heart of the Tondo dump site. Uh, 60,000 people live at the Tondo Dump, 40,000 of which are youth. So I'm really excited about seeing how I can serve them. So that'll be something that you transition back and forth? Are you going to be staying in the Philippines? How will that work out? Probably six to eight months a year there, four to six months here. I'll be traveling the country, raising money for them sharing their ministry with different churches across the United States. So we're excited that you're going to at least stay involved with ministry because I think it's so important to, to bring those talents to bear in, in that area. Well, let, let's come back to LifeQuest, yes, Chance, sir. and let's talk a little bit about some of the things that you guys are involved with because you obviously are involved. Talk yes, to sir. us a little bit today about what's going on, and then I understand that you guys had a capstone event recently. We'll kind of lead into that in a minute, but tell us about what's going on with LifeQuest right now today. Yes, sir. Um, so we just finished our... Uh, latest semester of our 413 journey, um, our, our community-based program. Um, what a wonderful time that was. We just had our graduation for that, uh, and, and that'll lead into our, our culminating event here soon. Um, and, and just so you know, John's not leaving LifeQuest. He'll still be a consultant. I, I, oh, I good. plan on him helping us to start our LifeQuest International uh, mm -hmm. in the future, where we good. would send our kids to someone we know and trust on a mission trip 
basis, great, ministry great. So you'll, you'll stay engaged in he, different capacities. Yes, he doesn't get good. away. Okay, no, okay. No. Yes, sir. We'll continue on. So you, you just finished this up, uh, your your graduation. How long does it take for kids to move through the process to get to graduation? Is it's, that a year or two years? How far is that? How long does that take them? So, so our, our first, uh, their first involvement with us is a 12-week character building program. Okay. Uh, so 12, 12 weeks of character traits and then six adventures throughout. Uh, once they graduate, we move into the, the longer-term program, which is our 414 journey. And so the 414 journey, how long does that one last? Or can it, is it indefinite? Indefinite, okay. sir. Okay, so that could go a little bit longer. Now, before we started today, you guys were both telling me that you'd taken a group of kids out in Arizona and uh, had hiked the Grand Canyon. I understand that that is part of kind of, I think you referred to it as the, the capstone event. Mm -hmm. the, yes. The big event says, hey, we've, we've arrived. What does it take to be able to go on that special event? And then tell us about what happened, Chance. So for, for them to be able to go on the event, they must graduate the 413 journey. And then they also must complete... That's the 12-week process. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Must com, uh, complete that. And then they must also go through our training program. Okay. So that's eight weeks of training hikes and increasing difficulty starting at five miles. to uh, we, They actually have to do La Luce and some other really hard trails here, 14-mile trails, um, before they can participate in our Grand Canyon hike, which is 18 miles. Um, the whole premise is if we can help. I was going to ask that. Yes, why do we? Why do we do a hike? What's the, what's the, the part of that right. the importance? And then again, this is just our first iteration of our culminating event. I think there's more to come. Uh -huh. But for this, is uh, if we can do, if we can help them to do something safely and responsibly now, that is hard. Then they can have the faith in Christ. They have the courage to be resilient when they need it in the future. Uh -huh. A lot of the kids that you are dealing with may have never been challenged like that, I would guess. Yes, sir. And so to, to be challenged and pass the challenge is kind of a, a big check mark, isn't it? That's For to be sure. able to say, hey, well, look what we were able to do. Okay, so you headed out to the Grand Canyon. Uh, when did you do this? What, what month was that? Was that recent? Yes, sir. That was at the beginning of May, um, just a couple weeks or three weeks ago. Uh, this was our hardest one we've done yet. And it was just because of weather and, and other things. Um, our trailer popped a tire both on the way there and back. Isn't that crazy? Um, yeah. we, uh, we had like 40 mile an hour winds blowing in our face the entire hike, uh, 80 degrees at the bottom, 27 and snowing at the top. Wow. It was a... So, you know, 50 40. degree <laughs> swing in the weather is something. <laughs> yes, sir. And, and then the, I've heard from others that that's not an easy, uh, easy hike anyway. Yes, so how many kids did you take? How many teens were on this? So, so this was 33 youth and 18 adults total. Oh. Okay. But, and, and we offer a three-mile hike, a six-mile hike, or the entire hike, which is 18. Uh, so the number of people total that went on the big hike was 28. Um, so, John, did you go? I did not. You did I, not? I was officiating a wedding that week. Well, that was a good day to be officiating yes, a wedding, it was. possibly. Yes, saying, it hey, was. You know, I'll, uh, I'll give somebody else the chance this time around to, to, to lead it from uh, the 50-mile uh, or 50-degree swing in weather. I'm, yeah. I'm a nice guy that way. Yeah, it's nice. Nice to be able to delegate, right? <laughs> there you okay, go. I got gotcha. you. So, did you see anything special chance happen yes. on the hike? We did, sir. Um, we actually had seven people, uh, six youth and one parent, make the decision um, to make their faith public and, and to be baptized in the Colorado River That's at great. the bottom of the Grand Canyon. Was wow! A, so that was a that would have, must have been special to see oh, very much. Uh, a group of people say, "Hey, you know, I want to to make." My profession in Jesus Christ, known to others, I'm going to be baptized. That's yes, pretty sir. exciting stuff as you think about it. What do you think that the kids will learn on something like uh, one of these hikes? I mean, you've been on those. I mean, I've, I've done the Wally's Trail. At least I'm not sure I did all of it. I think they dropped us off halfway. We went to the top and came back down. It was still pretty far. I mean, it was fun. Yes, sir. That, you know, as a, as a teenager did that. Uh, what do kids learn? So I think there's a oh, – so multifaceted, but I would say um, – they get to put what the 413 journey um, is based upon, you know, Philippians 413. Uh, they get to put it not only in practice physically, but spiritually. Mm -hmm. so they, they get to realize they're stronger than they thought they were. They're more capable than they thought they were. Not because they're special, but because they choose to have the courage to, to keep going to even when things... On. Yeah. In the midst, in the face of adversity, and 40-mile-an-hour winds. Yeah, and, and snow. Yes, <laughs> yes. Sir. 
John, as uh, you guys are looking into the summer months, what are some of the things that, you know, is there still a need for volunteers? Are you hoping to, to uh, I know when you want making a handoff, you want to make it strong. So sure. what are you guys needing right now? Well, always, we always need volunteers. We're like every other ministry, time, treasure, talent, right? Um, our golf tournament, uh, our annual golf tournament is next Monday. We still can sign golfers up through the end of this week. Okay. So if anybody's interested, come play golf with us. Um, and uh, getting ready to do our Ready for Life program, which Great. is a three-day seminar in both uh, YDDC here in Albuquerque and John Paul Taylor in Las Cruces. Mm -hmm. That'll be the end. In fact, my last day as LifeQuest president will be spent in a juvenile facility doing a seminar. So okay. we'll excited see. about that. So busy summer, um, and uh, I'll still be around and looking forward to working with Chance, seeing where God takes Life quest next. Absolutely. Well, of course, uh, contact information is on the screen. Depending on when you are watching, there may be a chance to participate in the upcoming golf tournament. And certainly, uh, opportunities to volunteer as we move through summer and into into the future. It's great to be able to meet you today, Chance, Thank and you, we are so thankful, John, for the opportunity that we've had to connect with you over the last several years. You've Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you for the information, John. Thank you. Thank you. Watch the Daystar Network 24 hours a day on KAZQ 32.5. I want to start off today by just simply saying that we are thankful for you. We are thankful for the wonderful family of viewers that we have here at Alpha Omega Broadcasting. And 2024 has been an exciting year as we are continuing to see our viewership grow and grow and grow. Uh, Ruth, we are now on uh, not only nationally but internationally on Roku. Um, we're seeing continued growth there. And we're seeing uh, regular delivery of the, the signal through uh, broadcast and cable and DISH and DirecTV. And it's just so good to know that so many of you, thousands and thousands of our friends, just like you, are participating with Alpha Omega Broadcasting. Many of you have connected with us and you support Alpha Omega Broadcasting. We'd invite you to visit our website at kazq32.org to find out all about the programming you just heard about and also to become a partner of Alpha Omega Broadcasting. You can do that safely and securely. You can also set up a certain day of the month for that donation to be made and you don't have to worry about it anymore. If you would like to call in to the station and speak to someone about that, you can do that at 505-884-8355 extension 121 or if you have it in hand and you want to use snail mail, you can do that mm. to send it to Alpha Omega Broadcasting at 4501 Montgomery Boulevard Northeast, Albuquerque, New Mexico, 87109. I want to mention the fact that we have with us now about 55 different ministries, great ministries, national ministries, local ministries, doing a great job. They are so good. I watched uh, so many of our, the programs at home, mm -hmm. and I'm just like, man, this is good stuff. Mm -hmm. I know it will bless you, and I encourage you to let others know. We also, about a year ago, made a, a bigger move in the area of family entertainment purposely to help you have family-safe programming, and we're doing that throughout the day, on the weekends, and on the overnight mm -hmm. and we are seeing just a great response to that as well but we could certainly use your support for our family safe haven $32 a month helps us in the area of family programming do your best thank you for all you do watch Jimmy Swagger and the Sun Life Network 24 hours a day on KAZQ 32.3 are privileged to have with us this evening Tamara Aragon who is with Quality Tam Show on YouTube. Yes. Sir. We are excited about this to have a YouTuber with us this, <laughs> e this evening. So Tamara, tell us a, a little bit about yourself. Okay. And how in the world did you get involved with doing stuff on YouTube? Because I, my knowledge of you was really more as a worship leader. I've yes. seen you in different settings like yes. that. So tell us about your new projects and what yes, you're doing. Yes, absolutely. So I still am a worship leader, can very much so go to different churches all around. I now work for myself, which is exciting. So Excellent. having our own business has been wonderful. Um, but I have lots of years of experience in worship leading, but also have lots of years of experience with the, with the mentoring. And I was teaching in jails and prisons. Uh -huh. So I was doing that at the um, our local jail, MDC. And then also Grant's Women's Prison and things like that. And just working with different women on where they're at and what's going on in that world, right? So then it kind of transitioned to through 
mentorships with high schoolers and hmm. middle schoolers. And then okay. sort of time was passing and all of this was coming up and, and I'm meeting with all these different people. And I thought, what, what if, what if we, my husband and I, what if we maybe did this, but we did it in a different way where we could reach more people at once okay. and, and try to kind of come at this with a different approach. And Hey, if we can be out there with YouTube is so, so readily available podcasts are out there. Sure. And so I thought, well, if, if people are asking for this so much, then why don't we put this out there and see what they think? Okay. So how long it's, ago it's did really you start new. this? How long ago did it begin? So this is, this is, this is fresh. This is a baby because it's what only maybe four or five months old. Okay. I mean, we are just like just launching this just show. Beginning to go. Yes. But it's been wonderful. wonderful. Well, let's talk about the show. So the okay. quality TAM show, what yes. does it really aim to do? So the quality TAM show is for anybody who just wants to learn more about one, what the Bible says about what they're going through. So we have different topics that we'll cover. So we'll have, we've just released a show on grief. And mm -hmm. so I go into that topic and we discuss m maybe some statistics around grief and what that looks like. Also what the Bible says about grief, maybe how we should be approaching that in prayer, where to start. Some people don't know what to do with, with what's happened to them. And that grieving isn't just when you lose someone in your life through death, but it also goes through processes in life and seasons in life. So we kind of get into that. But there's other topics. You, you know, know, people, I mean, you think about grief, because sometimes somebody may move away and they did yes. not, they didn't die. But for all intents and purposes, they're gone. No, they're gone from your right. life. I mean, yeah, you can pick mm -hmm. up the phone, but it's not the same. Well, and think about people who, when they break up with someone, it feels sure. almost like a death. It yeah, really does. Exactly. So there's these deep wounds that can happen or people who've gone through trauma. You know, there's things you need to grieve through. And it's just encouraging people to start that process or if they're in the process to continue going through that process. Okay, so you're dealing with practical topics. Practical that, topics, That yes. are daily encounters that you would have in your life. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. You, as I said earlier, you know, my... my interactions with you a lot have been through seeing you involved with worship. Yes. I'd seen you at, you know, like the National Day of Prayer. Mm -hmm. I know you were real involved with Calvary Chapel on, uh, here in Albuquerque and doing great things. There. Yeah. So, you know, do you still work? You said you still work with worship teams some? I do. So I actually resigned from working in the church as a worship leader, but I'm still very much so part of the church as sure, a whole. Sure. Um, and, and my husband is full time. I am doing now this contracted work outside of that. So it's really exciting. So I can go, that's why you'll see me sometimes on different places or they're like, where does she go? What is she doing now? That's what I'm doing is I'm helping okay. different churches with what they need. So if it's a guest worship leader, if it's doing a workshop for their team, if it's just communication with the band and how to better communicate with one another, we do that as well. So it's oh, a ton of fun. Yeah, so you it. kind of work as a consultant. Is that, yes. a, is that, a, is yeah. that a good way of thinking about it? I've been called a mentor, consultant, a coach, worship coach, that kind of stuff. All so right. yeah, right. just how many, help how many you years of experience do you bring to the table in that <gasps> regard? Okay, I'm like I'm gonna tell them my age right now. No, no, just um, as a worship leader. Just kidding, I don't mind. But as a worship, <laughs> unless leader, you started in I'm, your infancy, I don't well, know. Well, you know. pretty close. <laughs> I did start in the about the age 12. I was given my first you know lead song at 12 okay. because I was you know singing and someone heard me and knew that I sang. And, and I was like, oh my go. goodness. So we just went in right to it. And so since then, I mean, my parents were worship leaders when I was younger and they uh -huh. do music. They're very talented as well. And they're doing all, <laughs> they're just like, they were all over the place too. So I learned this from a very young age sure. and with my grandparents and stuff and yeah. all that. But, but growing up that way and then doing music for so long, it's been about roughly 20 years now. It's wonderful to have that many years of, of experience because yes. you know over the course of time mm -hmm. you you work with different team members you work with different dynamics don't oh, yeah. you and, oh, yeah. and some of them you know let's be real every every type of dynamic sometimes there's some really great dynamics and yes. other times it's kind of bumpy and you're like wow you know I didn't expect to to see that and my mom was a uh, was a a music director and nice. I remember she made this statement to my dad and as, as a little kid she said you know I think when Satan fell from heaven he fell into the choir loft Ooh. because there was always people that have friction in the music <laughs> department so I, I kind of one of those things that I have always remembered so, so well said where do you have do you have degrees <laughs> that you bring to the table as you're doing your show or sharing in areas yes, of and lead, worship leadership I love sure. I love to very much so say the disclaimer of I'm not your doctor I am not your therapist, okay, fair. but I did go to school for communication and psychology. Okay. So those are two loves that I have in my life of just like learning to communicate. I love when we can work through something and genuinely work through it, you know, 
genuinely go through it mm-hmm. and walk mm-hmm. through it with different people and, and really talk through what needs to be talked through. As that's well good. as as well as music, you know. That's good. Learning and growing, yeah, in that way. All yeah, right. it's awesome. So yeah. as you're thinking about all of the things that you're doing uh, along the line, what are you most excited about when you think about this new podcast? Honestly, what where I where I sit with that is it brings me such joy, such joy to know that someone could be sitting on their couch. And watching the show or in bed late at night, like, man, I just, you know, they're Googling some topic and then they, it pops up the quality Tam show and they get to be encouraged and uplifted and directed towards something Uh that is healthy, a good godly transformation that's realistic, that's tangible, that's, that's practical, you know, Mm -hmm. so that they can move along their life because whatever age that you are, there's, there's a way to walk through the things of life, the way that God wants us to do it. And I don't force you to do it my way. And I don't say that you should, but I try to give you the most, um, the most (laughs) biblical and kind way to do so. So Tamara, you're, you've been going at this for a few months. Yes. Do you have like, you know, uh, let's say an experience you'd say, this was, this, is making me feel like I'm on the right track. I mean, getting some feedback from somebody or somebody oh, who's walked up to you or, you know, I don't know, however they've interacted. So I'll make it short because I know we don't have all day, but I, I, um, yes, I'm going to, it's very emotional when I am walking, when I'm in a store and somebody will stop me and say, are you quality Tam? And I'm like, yes, I am. How are you? You know, we get to meet and chat a little bit. Sure. And then they proceed to say, whatever it is, show that they watched or that moment in time that just, they stopped and said, I decided to forgive my father of this many years of unforgiveness. When I watched the way that you said this just changed my perspective. Or if it's somebody who, who says I, I was genuinely sitting by myself hiding and didn't want anybody to notice me. And when I watched your show on grief, Mm-hmm. I saw that there is a way to walk through it. That it was just, it was the help for me to get up out of my bed and, and move on, you okay. know, to walk through life. It's amazing to have those kinds of stories. Yeah, it is. And, and then that makes you feel like, you know, the Lord is involved in what you're doing. Very and much that so. kind of affirms, doesn't yes, it? Affirms absolutely. the process. And it's because- all baked in prayer. It's all, it's all just constantly uh, covered in, Lord, what you want, I will do. And topics that are harder and maybe that I don't really feel like approaching, sure. I pray through those and I do the research on that. And then I say, God, you can have it, blow your life on it and just bring life to this. And That's whoever good. it needs to touch and talk to, may you do that. Let it be you. Now you're still doing some live events. So what's yes. the next time that somebody might be able to, to see you yeah. leading worship? So I'm still sharing. singing. Uh-huh. So this past weekend, um, I was over at Sagebrush helping them out this past weekend. And then um, upcoming, I've got a couple um, uh, times that I'm over at Calvary as well. Well, and that's still my home church. Um, and then I'm and then I'm singing at an event coming up June thirtieth. Okay. And so June thirtieth is a Sunday, and it's for Faith and Family Night at the Isotope Stadium. Cool. And so it'll be a ton of fun. It's going to be me and a few friends, and we're going to get to do the pre worship show. So we get to do like an hour's worth of music. Wow. Uh, yeah, that's it's a gonna, big deal. Yeah, it's a really fun. And then I'll be singing the national anthem as well. Okay. So I haven't sung the national anthem in a while, but. I'm ready to do it. All right. It. <laughs> and then if they want to find the Quality Tam, you just go to, to YouTube and just say, type yes. it in? Yes. You can go to the Quality Tam show. You can go to the Quality Tam show, or you can also go to qualitytam.com as well. And you can find me on Instagram and Facebook as well. And, okay. And we can chat there, and you can see a bunch of fun stuff. All right. Yeah. Some neat stuff. So I, I encourage you to look for Tamara as you are not only in the community, but online. And uh, really tie in with this really cool uh, new option and uh, just being encouraged and being blessed. Thanks for being with us. Thank you. talking about the power of the Holy Spirit and to never forget the power that is in the Holy Spirit. We're going to be reading Acts 12 verses 7 through 10. Suddenly there was a bright light in the cell and an angel of the Lord stood before Peter. The angel struck him on the side to awaken him and said, quick, get up. And the chains fell off his wrists. Then the angel told him, get dressed and put on your sandals. And he did. Now put on your coat and follow me. The angel ordered. So Peter left the cell following the angel but all the time he thought it was a vision. He realized, he, when he realized it was actually happening, 
They passed through the first and second posts and came to the iron gate leading to the city, and this opened for them all by itself. So they passed through and started walking down the street. Then the angel suddenly left him. You know, that event, as we read in chapter 12, starts off talking about the murder of James, Mm -hmm. the incarceration of Peter. And then the verses you read talks Mm -hmm. about the angelic deliverance. Now, there's a a section that says that the church prayed earnestly. Mm -hmm. Okay, Never forget the power of prayer. The Holy Spirit moves through the power of prayer. And one of the things that I think we should understand is that God has miraculously intervened all throughout time. You know, you think about Abraham on Mount Moriah. At just the moment when he was about to strike Isaac, God provides the Mm -hmm. ram in the thicket. You have Moses at the Red Sea, yes, that's good. and suddenly God opens things and, and, pass, and allows them to pass through. Mm-hmm. You have other occasions, too. Joshua at the Jordan River, at the, right? At yeah, the flood. absolutely. Mm-hmm. The they flood crossed. Season. You're right. Ruth, as she was directed to the exact field that Boaz, the kinsman redeemer, was going to be at, that was an act of the Lord. Absolutely. Azariah, Mishael, and Hananiah, when mm-hmm. they were delivered from, from the fiery furnace. And Daniel, as he was thrown into the lion's the 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 lion's den with the hungry lions, those that threw him in were devoured. Right? They were ripped to shreds, and the nothing ones that happened followed, to him. Followed, yeah, that had persecuted him. Yeah, and nothing happened to him. You know, you think about all of that, and you realize that God has been intervening throughout time. Amen. And that you know what good. what happens when God intervenes in your life? That's a miracle. We had a miracle take place at church last Sunday. Yes. Someone we prayed for had a healing dramatically happen in their back, in the service. God took away the pain. They were able to move. It was was an amazing, encouraging event. God is working. The Holy Spirit is moving. I encourage you, seek after the Lord, and you won't be disappointed. Have a blessed day.